Perfect. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are super excited because we have the wonderful director and producer from The Magician's Elephant, Wendy Rogers and Julia Pastor. Um, we are so thrilled to take the time to talk to you guys today because I think we all collectively agree that this is just such a beautiful movie. And in a time when we're always searching for content that's good for our children, this is a perfect example of a great movie from a book that we should all sit and watch as a family. So without further ado, I'm gonna throw it over to our wonderful influencers who all have questions prepped to talk to you. Our first one's gonna come from Candy Olivares from Candy Palooza. Candy. Hi, Wendy, Julia, thanks for joining us today and speaking with us. Congratulations on such a beautiful film, as Ari mentioned. Um, and I'll show them that it's a adaptation of a children's book. What was it about the book that made you um, want to create a film? Um, for, for me, obviously, when I came to the project, there was already a script. But when I read the book, um, it just captured my heart. It just pulled me right in. And I knew I had to look after Peter. I knew I had to help him find his sister. Um, I loved that it was uh, a magical fable-like world, uh, which was really compelling for me. I loved the ensemble of characters and the idea that through this boy's um, actions, you know, his grit and bravery and his just complete belief and hope, the whole town changed and the family came together. A family was formed, which those are my favorite kinds of movies. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Candy. Our next question is going to come from Tracy Shannon from FSM Media. Tracy. Uh, yes, I'm Tracy from FSM Media, and um, I was deeply touched by the the element of the loss of innocence equaling being stronger, mm -hmm. and how um, the, the throwing away of the fairy book tale books, and then at the in that whole element of the story that was just so profound to me. And I just thought maybe if you wanted to speak a little to that, and maybe if that was any of the part that attracted you to that, and um, because it seemed like it was a deep part of the film and 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 really elevated in the film. And thank you for that, by the way, as a parent. So um, I'm sure Julie will have something to add. <laughs> We finish each other's sentences she can a lot. Hear that I breathe in about <laughs> to speak. Yeah, but, but one of the things that that I always felt, um, you know, Vilna is raising Peter in quite a strict, you know, utilitarian, soldierly way. But he's doing that, and he thinks it's a gift to raise Peter to, to be strong against a hard world. And one of the one of the beautiful things for me is that he relearns that it's okay to care, that it's okay to be emotional, that it's okay to be in touch with your emotions. And in fact, it's connectedness that is where safety lies, is where joy lies, is in being connected. Um, through following Peter's journey, he he learns that as well. So. And I, I just want to add, I, I mean, I agree with you. I'm a mother of three children. I think that, you know, society doesn't let kids be kids very long anymore. And I, I think just because of everything that's going on in the world, social media, the news, whatever, I think kids think that they get to a certain age and they're supposed to, yeah, they're supposed to be strong and they're going to, they're supposed to not have imaginations anymore. But if you look around the Elon, you know, Elon Musk, he he's everything because of his imagination and because he never gives up the belief and hope and he never gives up believing in himself that he can do impossible things. So I think that's really important. And I love that you picked up on that. And I love what Wendy's saying. Because the whole town remembers, like, we don't have to shut the world out. We don't have to be tough. And we don't have to be soldiers to be strong, right? Peter changes the whole world, is strong, and ha and takes action. And that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, we were touching on earlier how the impossible is possible is such a great parenting message. I think every single one of us have those moments where our kids just feel like things are impossible. And it helps us break down the narrative in a way we're saying it's not, it is possible. Peter can fly. Like look at what his imagination and his creativity and his determination did. Um, such a great message for parents to share with their families. Um, our next question is gonna come from Kathy Cupkit from Live with Kathy. 
Thank you so much for being here. So we've watched this movie twice now. And as a homeschooling mom, I really appreciate the fact because um, it's interracial marriage. It is you speaking about the war. There's a lot to unfold there. And I'm glad that you have created um, the best way for me to say it is a line of communication because my kiddo had a million questions watching the movie. Like, what was the war about? What's going on? You know, and so I want to know what is it you scores to take away from um, watching the movie? I'm sorry, you cut out just a little bit there, in, just in when you were asking. Oh, I'm so sorry. I apologize. I was saying there was so much to unpack there. And I, I personally, I loved it because of the fact that it opened the line of communication with my kiddo. And I wanted to know what is it that you would, what is, what's important for you? What's the takeaway? What would you like your audience goers to learn? I mean, I think for me that the, the two most important kind of messages, if you like, from the film is that, you know, yes, anything is possible, but you have to ask you have to question you have to ask what if you have to take action it's not just about believing in the impossible it's about taking action to make it happen and and i think that you know the the empathy that peter has for the elephant the the empathy for all beings right is is um something that we can all learn from and that connectedness that we all share um with with our fellow humans and with all of the creatures that we exist with yeah, and I would I would add to that, I mean, that empathy is a superhero power, right? I mean, I think that he our our hero achieves his goals because he take he he has he's compassionate. And those words sound soft. There's nothing soft about Peter. He's really brave and he's willing to fight and the toughest soldier. Yeah. And the other thing is just never give up. Don't forget to look for the sun in the clouds because it's there. Uh you just can't give up on your dreams. I we loved it. I I can't say enough about it because there's so, so much to learn. It's just not, it's not another animation. It, there's so much to learn. And I want to thank you guys for creating this. It's beautiful. Thank you. So much. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Our next question is going to come from Nicole from Multicultural Maven. Hi ladies. How are you? Hi. Hi. Um, we were really intrigued by the animation of the film and I was kind of wondering what made you guys kind of go for like a muted color palette and a clay like animation for the film. It's interesting because um, the the color palette is very much driven by the fact that you know the town having lost hope is is sitting under these clouds that don't move or break or budge and. Um, so that's sort of a, a you know a, an allegory for for the loss of hope, and we didn't, but we didn't want it to be totally gray under there. So we allowed that there was would change lighting, uh, you know, based on time of day, and and that they would absorb sunlight from above. But we wanted the world to have this beautiful, soft, diffuse kind of um, lighting quality. I think that the animation style for me, um, we wanted it to be very physically grounded. We wanted it, it, it is stylized. We wanted to make sure because our characters are stylized. You know, if, you, if you're just gonna do sort of physically human animation, then you should just do physical humans. And we wanted this to be a fabled world. We wanted it to feel fabled. We also wanted the elephant to feel physically, uh, more physically real than the other characters. She is from somewhere else. She doesn't fit in here. She doesn't belong here. And so we had the juxtaposition of those kind of elements. She's more physically real in her design and in her weight um, than the other characters. Well, we loved it. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. And while we're on the elephant, the way you guys created the emotion through her eyes, I felt like you could feel her story, her heartache, her pain. You could tell she felt like she didn't belong there just through her eyes. Um, it was it was moving. Every time she was on the screen, I felt like my heart was tugging just to make sure that elephant found her family. It was. Aww, thank you. Kudos our next, to our animation team for that. And I'm yes. out our head of animation. Beautiful. I mean, they did such a wonderful, beautiful job. Um, our next question is going to come from Angel Camacho from Queen Bee Latina. Hi, ladies. Thank you so much for having me. It is such a beautiful story, and I love this adaptation. Um, what sticks out for me is truly the different layers and the complexities of the characters, um, specifically uh, 
Lutz and the soldier that he battles. I wanted to talk about the character development and what that looked like, because I believe these characters are so human and relatable, which I absolutely love. That that for me was huge. Well, I mean, it start it starts with the book. Kate, you know, wrote a book where she spent a lot of time, uh, you know, dim providing dimensional characters with with deep inner personal lives, and I think it was really important to us when we went into animation to not you know, to stay true to that. And, and Wendy will speak to it, to just have the production design, have the actors, um, have every everything not sort of make what, and sometimes animation does something that's squash and stretch and gets sort of simpler. And we wanted to, we really wanted to have the room throughout the whole film to have uh, nuanced characters that could have real inner lives. Yeah, I mean, it was, it, we obviously, you know, I didn't want to do a, a broad squash and stretch style animation. I wanted it to feel, um, very, I wanted to, um, our characters to be capable of very subtle and nuanced emotion because that's part of what the feeling and the voice is from the book as well. And you want to see the characters think and feel and you know, then we had an amazing cast that just brought characters to life. I mean, you talk about Vilna Lutz, Mandy Patinkin was just, he just created a beautiful, beautiful, nuanced, emotional character um, with his voice. So, um, it, yeah, it, it is very much by design to, to bring that sort of nuance and subtle expression and to give the characters time to have that on screen as well, which is where I think some of the, the sort of claymation kind of sensibilities, um, you know, align is that it's just sort of that not everything is moving all the time, that we let characters stop and think and breathe. Yeah. Thank you so much, ladies, and congratulations. Thank Thanks, you. Thank you. But last and certainly not least, we have Cami Allen from The Mama Diaries. Cami, take it away. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Julia. I'm Cami from The Mama Diaries.com. So nice to speak with you both today. So, being that The Magician's Elephant is a book to film adaptation, I was wondering if you were able to collaborate at all with the author, um, Kate DiCamillo. No, <laughs> we didn't. But um, so Kate is the kind of writer. She's had a number of her books uh, adapted into film. And she sort of is of the belief that when she's written a book, that she she's done her part and she's put the story out into the universe. And she's really welcoming for other people to ha sort of ha tell their interpretation of it. So in the beginning of the journey, I mean, I think she was like, yes, are you the right people to be making my film? you know, you're not going to make it a slasher movie. You know, I mean, I think she wants to make sure that it's in the same kind of zone. Um, and then she sort of left us to to make the film, but we did have touch points. She did read a script in a first adaptation. We did show her animation uh, along the way. Um, she's just the loveliest, most gracious, most inspiring writer. And she loved everything. And the thing that's most rewarding to us is that she loves the film and she feels like the the changes that we made, the things we added, and even the things we took away, all all led to a film that has that is even provides an even deeper experience on the themes and stories that she originally told. And we just spent the morning with her, and we love her. We love her. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. Thank you both so much. The film's gorgeous. Thank, thank you. you. Well, thank you all again for taking the time today to speak with us. To Wendy and Julia, thank you again for making this beautiful movie. Um, please, everyone, make sure to tell your friends and your family to um, take the time and sit down and watch The Magician's Elephant on Netflix when it opens March 17th. Um, thank you all. Please enjoy your, your Friday and your weekend. And thank you again for your time. Thank you. Take care. Bye, everyone.